I was 15 then, and uh, I'm going to school, and a couple of my friends says, the uh, state secret police is waiting for you. You better not go to school. I did go back home. There was nobody at home. I left a note that I'm leaving, that I have to leave. I didn't have time to go in detail because I was really, really shook up. And I had a gold coin collection. I taped it to the soles of my feet with some kind of a tape. I took all the money that I had saved up with me. And uh, I took my little briefcase with school books and everything, just in case I get stopped by the Border Patrol. They came uh, to our, our village or town. Uh, they wanted to uh, start the collective farms. And uh, my father was one of the bigger landowners, so they pushed, they were pushed, pressing on him to become member of the collective farm, and he refused. So then uh, he ended up being in jail for six months, and then uh, for six months they sentenced him to a forced labor in a coal mine. It was supporting us very nicely. We had no problem, and we also employed people uh, uh, during harvest and so on, and that was one of the things that they threw at us, that, uh, well, you are an exploiter of the working class. My son was in, in the kindergarten. No, actually, he was in a, in a nursery school. And we went along the street for a walk, and there was a big poster of Lenin. And my daughter said, look, mommy, comrade Lenin. And she said, this is enough. I don't want this anymore. I had enough. The child, they put it into the children. We have to go. We have to leave. So from that day on, we were trying to find some avenue how to get out. All my closest 30 friends came to say goodbye to the train station. But, what I may add, everybody was so loose about this. Everybody was so bitter over what happened. Everyone was just so upset that even, the, even on the borders, people knew we're not coming back, but they were like, good luck, have a good life, was what they said. So, um, so but my worst memories were prior to leaving, when I knew we were leaving, and, you know, we were in town, and there were all these tanks and shootings on, ran, because we had a curfew, and like at six or seven o'clock, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what it was. Um, but there were these tanks, and of course you'd say with the cobblestones, I mean, they were all ripped up from the tanks, and horrible, 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 rude, the, 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 the soldiers were, pretty rude to us because we were talking, so what are you doing here? They, some of them didn't even know they were not in, um, in their own country. Some had children in the tanks, and we brought them, yeah, because they were taken, the Russians were taken from wherever they were, were, take, were called in to go and save Slovakia or Czechoslovakia from, you know, from um, capitalism. They came to save us. So um, they were, it was horrible, it was horrible. One thing that was drummed into me from, by my parents from the moment we arrived here was forget everything that happened to you on the other side of the ocean. Remember nothing. This is we're starting a new life and they really believed that I did, you know. And uh, I, I guess, I think I believed that I did some, somehow subconsciously. I never talked to my friends. You know, when people would ask, well, where are you from? I would say, oh, I'm from Czechoslovakia. But that was it. I would never give them any detail. I'd never say, you know, well, during the war, I was one of the hidden children. None of that, that stuff. I never discussed it with anybody or people. 
you know, people would say, because I I, mean, I played soccer before soccer was very popular here, and I was, you know, I was much better than anybody else. They'd say, oh, did you learn to play soccer like that? Oh, well, in Czechoslovakia. But that was, that was the extent of any conversation I would have, and because I, I was bound and determined by God, I was, I was an American, I, you know, as far as I was concerned, that never even happened. So I, I didn't pay any attention until 1968. When Prague Spring came, it was like a different world. I suddenly, suddenly I felt like I was a Czech. I started listening on the, I had this trans trans transatlantic zenith radio, you know, with short wave, and I started listening to Radio Prague, and I heard all these beautiful things, and I heard Dubček speak, you know, and all of a sudden, I felt like I was both an American and a Czech. No, not for very long. <laughs> and then, after the invasion, I said, I put the curtain down again. I know that I cannot accomplish in one tenth in Slovakia or accomplish in America because when I compare myself to the, my friend, same educated, not to see that, don't forget, smaller country, smaller opportunity. This is a big country, long as you have guts, know how, you can move as far as you want it. That's a beautiful country. I love America. And I